To perform any activity, we need energy. This energy is obtained from the breakdown of organic molecules such as sugars, fats and proteins inside the body's cells. During the process of breaking down of organic molecules, the cells continuously use oxygen and release carbon dioxide. To provide fresh oxygen to the cells and to remove carbon dioxide which is harmful to them, living organisms inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. This process of inhaling and exhaling is called breathing. The process of breathing accompanied by the breakdown of foods to produce energy is called respiration. However, the mechanism of breathing varies depending on the habitat and level of organization of an animal. Lower invertebrates such as sponges, cilenterates and flatworms exchange gases by simple diffusion through their body surface. In insects such as cockroaches and earthworms, Tubular extensions of the body wall, called tracheae, and moist skin help transport atmospheric air throughout the body. Most mollusks use special vascularized structures called tinidium for gaseous exchange. Some arthropods, such as spiders and scorpions, use many thin folds of membrane resembling the pages of a book for respiration. These are called book lungs. Terrestrial forms of vertebrates use vascularized bags called lungs. Among vertebrates, fishes respire through gills, whereas amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals respire through lungs. Apart from lungs, frogs can also respire through their skin. Among all animals, mammals have the most well-developed respiratory system. In humans, it consists of respiratory organs such as the respiratory tract and lungs. The respiratory tract includes the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea and bronchi. The nose is made up cartilage and bone. While inhaling, it warms, moistens and filters air that enters the body through the nostrils. This air then passes through the nasal chamber. The nasal chamber opens into the pharynx, which is the common passage for food and air. The pharynx opens through the glottis of the larynx region into the trachea. The larynx is a cartilaginous box, also called the sound box, because it helps in sound production. The glottis is covered by a thin, elastic cartilaginous flap called the epiglottis. that prevents the entry of food into the larynx. The trachea is a tubular passage that allows air into the lungs. It is made up C-shaped cartilaginous rings and is divided into two branches called primary bronchi. Each primary bronchus undergoes repeated divisions to form the secondary and tertiary bronchi ending up in very thin terminal bronchioles. The terminal bronchioles connect to ducts called alveolar ducts that open into tiny, spongy, air-filled sacs called alveoli which look almost like a bunch of grapes. 
An average adult's lungs contain about 600 million alveoli. Each alveolus is covered by thin and fragile blood capillaries, which combine to form the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein carries purified blood to the heart, and from the heart, the pulmonary artery carries impure blood to the lungs. Bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli form a part of a pair of lungs, the left lung and the right lung. The left lung has two lobes and is slightly smaller because of the location of the heart near it. The right lung is bigger with three lobes. The lobes are spongy and elastic organs with broad bottoms and tapering tops. Each lung is enclosed by two membranes, the outer pleural membrane and the inner pleural membrane. The outer pleural membrane is in close contact with the thoracic lining, whereas the inner pleural membrane is in contact with the lung's surface. The membranes enclose a space called the pleural cavity that contains pleural fluid. Pleural fluid reduces friction on the lung's surface when the lungs expand and contract. The lungs are situated in the airtight thoracic chamber. A thick membranous structure below the lungs separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. It is called the diaphragm. The thoracic chamber is supported by the vertebral column dorsally, by the sternum ventrally, by the ribs laterally and by the dome-shaped diaphragm on the lower side. The lungs in the thorax are arranged so that any change in the volume of the thoracic cavity reflects on the lung cavity or pulmonary cavity. Based on function, the respiratory system is divided into two parts, the conducting part and the respiratory part. The conducting part spreads from the external nostrils to the terminal bronchioles. It transports atmospheric air to the alveoli, clears it of foreign particles and humidifies the air. The respiratory part contains the alveoli and the alveolar ducts. The actual diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide between blood and atmospheric air takes place in the alveoli of the respiratory part.